you'd think by now that the supply chain would have fully recovered and everything would magically be back to normal by now, right? Not exactly. So today, uh, I'm hungry. I just went to my fridge. I'm in my basement office. I have a second kitchenette for my, my work area. And I was looking at these nice, uh, uh, I don't even know what they call them, to be honest. What are these called? I don't know. <laughs> English muffins. That's the word or phrase I was looking for. Anyway, uh, and, and I realized I don't have a toaster in my secondary kitchenette and I, you know, didn't want to, I'm lazy. I didn't want to walk upstairs and go to my other toaster. And then my kids would track me down and then follow me back down to my office and preventing me from doing work. Right. Anyway, long story short, I decided, you know what, I should go out and buy a toaster. And so I started going, I, I don't know anything about toasters. I'm not an educated ind individual on anything as it comes to the, the, uh, the toaster world. So I was like, well, how would be the best way to buy a toaster today? And I thought, well, you know, I'll just go to camel, 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 and I'll put the toaster phrase in and see what comes up. So in this particular video, I'm going to show you uh, a little bit of product research slash uh, show and tell on like what's happening with pricing and large. And we'll, we'll use toasters as a great use case example. And I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go shoot that. Uh, uh, gonna go get that toast. Uh, toast going while we make this video. Amazon is difficult. It's everything but passive income. I share videos like this one to help Amazon sellers on their journey. My name is Stephen Pope, and I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. When Amazon turns your world upside down, tune into My Amazon Guy to land safely and grow your Amazon business. All right, so I went upstairs, got my English muffin, cooked, ready to roll. Kids totally terrorized me. It took me a while to get back down here to keep recording. F first thing I would say is, who, who in the world would buy an English muffin with, with raisins? I, we had two kinds. Luckily, I got the kind without raisins. All right, so, so I'm going to put this to a vote. If, if you think English muffins should or should not have raisins, put raisins or no raisins into the comments section. I'm, I'm just curious if I'm uh, in the minority on this one. All right, so let's dive in here. This is a great real world example on like how you would gauge the market on an item. It definitely could be considered part of your product research. Maybe you already sell an item and you're trying to gauge like how your competitors are doing, stuff like that. That's kind of what this video will curtail. So uh, if you just go to camelcamelcamel.com, you can type in toaster. And I like some of the graphs it provides. You could also use Keepa and many other tools to kind of look at price trends. But, but as I scroll through here, and let's just look at these together. So uh, this looks cool. It's got like a, a four slice, extra wide. Looks like it's a little, you know, uh, more modern than a typical old school toaster. So if we check this out and we look at this chart and I immediately know like where COVID hit, right? Like you can see, boom, okay, they started going out of stock. And this is the first time I've looked at toasters like ever. And, and so I'm actually surprised by this data. I'm like, hmm, wouldn't have thought toasters would be one of those things that went out of stock during that supply run. Uh, everybody talked about the toilet paper. Uh, maybe some of you may know that ammo is hard to get right now, still is by the way. Uh, and many other items that went very short, uh, including webcams because everybody was working from home. But I wouldn't have guessed toasters. But you can clearly see that's exactly what happened to these guys. They go out of stock. They get back in stock. They go out of stock again. That's why you see the prices going up and down, and they've since stabilized. But they used this opportunity uh, post-cycle to maintain a much higher price than their typical average uh, early this year, right around that $27 to $28, $30 range. So I'm going to end up paying $10 more for a toaster today if I bought this item than if I had purchased this a year ago. And it just, uh, I'm just like, oh, I don't want to spend that extra $10, right? So we, we, keep our, we keep our research going and we take a look to see, okay, so this is a higher end one. Let's see what their chart looks like. And uh, what's interesting about their data is that they don't have, let's see if I'm, okay, they've got a lot more data in here. So let's just go down to one year, hit apply. And so they also have a similar trend and their $50 uh, low price point, which was hit recently, so I just missed the window on that one, uh, but they also have this upward trend with a price stability at a high point from previous. So what that says is, is that the supply chain on toasters is still 
tight. At least we're two for two on that question anyway. So, and, and, and honestly, these are just the two first toasters that came up. So who knows as we look at more and more of this data. So if we go through here, I'm going to go to one year again on this one. Uh, so this is the cheapo toaster, and they did have a, a low price point of 1850, and then they had a high price point of 20, and they're 2084, and they're at 20. So uh, it's technically same trend line, uh, but by that trend right there. But uh, cheapo toaster did not really have that much of a stock out issue, uh, so slightly bucks the trend, but still within our bell curve there. Uh, we got a $22 item, so a little bit more than the typical cheapo. We go back to the one year here again, uh, similar similar data. But these guys have reverted back down. Now, <clears throat> if I was the seller of this tool, when it, apparently it's an Amazon basic, so, uh, but if I was them, I probably would have kept my price back up like the other guys because if the other guys are doing it, it's probably because it's working with the same stability of price point. So, of course, Amazon basics, they have a very different uh, metric in terms of what they're trying to accomplish behind the scenes. They just want their name brand out there. They're going to sell cheap stuff, just like they every year, uh, every time there's a Prime Day or, or a holiday, they put their Alexa and Echoes and all that stuff on sale. So this is a data point that I would completely ignore. However, still, still shows the trend lines uh, that toasters got hit for a supply run. All right, so we're going to look at a few more of here through Camel, Camel, Camel. Same trend line, it looks like. Let me just make sure I'm looking at this accurately. Yep, same trend line. What's interesting, though, is that Black Friday, they went heavy. So these are these guys really went heavy on the Black Friday, uh, and they had significant discounts, but their price point's still higher than when they were at the beginning of last year. So that's enough data by this point that we can pretty much extrapolate and figure out that Toasters are about 20%, 25% more expensive today than they were a year ago. A la good time to enter the toaster market if you're looking to enter a market at all. So one of the things you can do if we go over to like the actual live listing view on Amazon here and Camel Camel Camel, the way they make money is through uh, cookies and trying to get credit for affiliates, which is why they exist if you're curious. So you can see it's similar data, but a little bit more uh, helpful charts coming out of uh, Helium 10's data here. And I believe they just pulled this data out of Keepa, but I'm not 100% on that. And if we go to the one-year trend line, we're going to see the similar trend, just like we saw at the price point. That's the blue line here. And uh, the red line is the sales rank. So we can see uh, uh, it's a little bit more obvious when an item stocks out based on sales rank because you see that sales rank go uh, spike, even more so than the price hike. So the price only hiked five bucks, but the sales rank hiked like, uh, what is that, 600%, something like that. Uh, so you can kind of see that trend line a little bit better and read the data. Uh, you could also uh, take some of this data and kind of extrapolate further and figure out like how all of these competitors um, heat up against each other. Part of one of my things that I do during product research is also look at keyword volumes. Um, I am not personally aware of a way to look at uh, a trend line on a keyword that had more impressions today than it did a year ago. That probably does exist, but I don't, I don't use that data set. If you are aware of a tool that does that, please leave that uh, note in the comments section. So if we were trying to figure out like, hey, can we enter the toaster uh, you know, category here, we'd, we'd look at how mature some of these listings are. And, and you could look at multiple ASINs at the same time using a tool like Helium 10. By the way, in the top of my description section, there is a link to get 50% off your first month with Helium 10. Feel free to click that and take advantage of it. I do get a small affiliate uh, link out of that, enough to buy me a Mexican Coke. That's my favorite treat. Some people say cup of coffee. I don't drink coffee, but I but I do I do drink a little bit of Mexican Coke. Uh, it has the sugar cane, not the corn syrup. And coming out of a glass, it just tastes better to me. I don't know. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so if we're looking at this listing and we got the number of keywords here, uh, you can see 6,500 keywords. That's a very high amount. Uh, a typical listing in their first year, their, their gold targets to hit around 1,200 keywords. Now, every category is different, of course. Always an exception to every rule I ever talk about. 
Um, some of my best listings are in that five to 6,000 keyword rankings, and they're a couple years old um, that are doing really well. And then some of my weaker listings are in that 1,000 to 2,000. But if we look at this, we can get a pretty good idea of like how well this listing is doing. Uh, I really like the, the word frequency chart on the top right here. And it's an easy, quick way to realize like what are the main keywords for this listing. So toaster, oven slice, maker, bread, stainless. So the word that would have thrown most of us off is probably the word maker. So why is that word trying, uh, trying to take over our keywords here? Well, one of the things you can do to figure that out is show phrases that contain maker and then scroll down and there's 441, 444 of those of the 6,500, almost 10%. So if we scroll down and try and figure out and it's, it's probably gonna be related to something in here that we'll figure out. So dough maker, waffle maker, and maker stainless toaster. I don't know who's searching that. That's a weird one. Combination toaster oven coffee maker. I didn't even know that existed. Holy crap. Right. So like here, here's a great case example of like us going down this random product research journey. And I'm like, whoa, there's a thing that makes coffee and toast stuff. That's just weird. I didn't even know this existed. And the word nostalgia. So I'm, I'm, I'm guessing this might have been like a thing back in the 50s or something. Uh, based on the color alone, I'm making that extrapolation. Um, and interesting, what a, what a niche. So some of, the, some of the things that you can figure out when you're looking down the line here. So this guy, I mean, this guy's uh, just dominating uh, the nostalgia store. So this guy like probably just goes through and recreates old items and then check out the price tag on this thing. I mean, it's, and it's ranked 13,000 in home. So, oh, excuse me, I, I misspoke, 136,000. Uh, this one's ranked 13,000. Okay, so I, I thought I saw something that was ranked well. So if we look at this one, and we, we're trying to figure out like how well is this guy doing? I mean, this guy is gonna be doing exceptionally well. So we look at his x-ray button, we can see uh, how, how much his sales are, 176,000 in revenue estimated in the last 30 days. So clearly that made a really good Christmas gift. And it's a talker. I mean, that's that's a talker item. I did not know this thing existed. Um, I am a. I'm at the tail end of the millennials, so maybe maybe some of you Gen Xers and Ys can uh, tell me why this is nostalgic. Educate me in the comment section here. But as I scroll down and look at this, I mean, they did a fantastic job with this listing. Uh, and that the bacon shots. You always got to have a good bacon shot when you're talking breakfast materials. Um, so I scroll down here and just, I'm just really curious about this listing all of a sudden. And sure enough, they had the same problem. Everybody else did stock out, stock out alert. Right. And, uh, their prices went up, but, uh, the blue line is a little hidden here. Hard to see. It looks like the list price and the, and the actual price are the same. Uh, so if you are part of the nostalgia brand watching my video, you, you know, tip to you, increase your list price to 99 99. That way you have a perceived higher value. Sometimes Amazon will show a strike through when you have the list price, especially if you've actually sold at that price, which you have, uh, you've sold above a hundred bucks. So if you put the list price in, you have a chance that the strike through will show through. A bunch of gold, golden tips I am um, expounding on here. Uh, man, they, they missed the bucket on the A plus content. Looks good, but no text. So surprised that their keywords are ranking so well. So uh, if, you know, if I'm if I'm in the mix to go into the toaster market, and all of a sudden I discover this, and I'm like, man, this guy's crushing it, and he has terrible A plus content, and these keywords are just doing really well. Here's an opportunity, right? Like we know that this would be prime real estate to go attack and gain some market share. Uh, this would be an item to go and try and get into, and don't just Alibaba this thing. You're probably going to have to have like an actual uh, manufacturer conversation and try and trace. Uh, who could make something of similar uh, quality and maybe even look at the, the negative comments. Let's go see what the number one star say. Cheaply made, do not buy, stops working, did not work, right? So and these are all fairly recent comments. Um, so cheaply made. So if you're going to remake this, probably need to make a little bit better version of it. But for 80 bucks, I, I guess I would expect it to do a little bit better. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a lot to have in a single utility item here, though. Um, 
I think there's a reason why items would probably be on their own, right? Like a, a singular toaster, a singular coffee maker, or a single griddle, right? Like there's probably a reason that exists because when you combine all those things together, instead of getting an exceptional version of each, you get a mediocre version of all of them. That's probably what happened here. Um, so if I was interested in getting into this appliance sector, I would then, as my next step, buy this product and test it out myself and then also start reaching out to manufacturers to try and figure out who can make it, order some samples, start comparing and contrasting. This all started with a, a, a hankering for some English muffins today, guys. And now all of a sudden I'm looking at uh, coffee toaster makers with a random, random niche. All of that was on the fly. Did not see that one coming. Um, started out looking at camel, camel, camel information just to see what was out there. And, and I'm still, I still haven't decided what toaster I'm going to buy. So I'm going to go back out of the niche there that just got me really curious. And by the way, it's better to start in a niche where you can be the best at it and the only seller at that niche versus trying to go through and sell another $20 toaster with no features or benefits. So, um, I do like the shot right here where they've got the perfect brown toast. Uh, everybody knows this is impossible to actually make. Uh, but they're trying to showcase that you have a better shot at making this with this toaster. So got to give them credit for that. But that's that's definitely Photoshop toast. No way you're getting toast that looks that good every single time in all three pieces at the same time. All right. So I am going to then do my same search just on Amazon proper. And interestingly enough, we see a $10 coupon off. Uh, I swear it was just on that item and I did not see the coupon. I don't know if I was blind. But yeah, it's there now, so I probably just missed it. Um, so isn't that a great case example of how coupons and ads are more eye-catching, but people miss the clip when they go? Uh, if you're ever wondering why you're like, your sales are up when you have a coupon live and nobody's not everybody's clipping the coupon, that, that was the scenario. That's how it happens. People see the coupon, they forget to clip it, and they still make the purchase. All right, so this guy's ranked 535 in, in Kitchen. Uh, and it, let's go back to, uh, I think, I think that was, yeah, this was this one. So while their price is at 50, they have a $10 off and the lowest it's ever been is basically that $10 off. So if I was trying to f bargain shop, this would be a pretty good candidate. I might end up purchasing that one, um, based on that alone. But if I was trying to figure out, okay, like what, what's available out there? Do I just need some basics from Amazon? Um, am I looking for uh, something a little bit more elite, like this little elite gourmet thing? Uh, great video uh, attention getting on their, their part right here with the rotation of the product. Uh, the one thing I probably would have done with them is I probably would have popped the toast like they just did in the first two seconds uh, to really get the attention because somebody who's looking to make, oh, that, that's a golden shot. That's a beautiful shot there. Let's... And they, they got music, but they probably didn't do the voiceover. This is better than 80% of the videos out there, so it probably is going to to work. Um, but uh, every video ever can always be improved, of course. Uh, they showcase the breadcrumb tray, which uh, everybody knows that's a pain in the butt. Um, all right, so we go through here. Not a lot of coupons in general. Part of that supply chain run where they probably can still sell them. Uh, this looks a little old school. I wonder why that's the case. Notice how they have the strike through here. That's that list price thing I was talking about earlier. And uh, let's go through their listing, see what they got. They got a defroster. Uh, level, okay, level seven. All right, okay, this is a great infographic. Great job on this. So, okay, I'm a level five guy. I, I want that perfect brown level five, maybe level four, somewhere in that range. What level are you guys? What kind of toast do you guys like? getting hungry uh still haven't eaten my english muffin here all right so if we look through here just to kind of check it out and see what they got interestingly enough very very high review count so i'm curious why that is i also want to see their price points so 60 dollars right now with the list price at 80 because they they had the see see here's a case example of why you need the list price in because they ever sold at 80 dollars in the last 60 days the list price is striking through, which makes it perceived as a higher value, and quite frankly, it is. Um, but as we can see the past data, they were selling at a less price. Again, 
five bucks less, 10% less. So it's still on that bell curve, uh, just uh, not as far to our averages based on everything else we looked at today. But they've been able to maintain pretty well since about August, uh, which is right around when the buying craze kind of stopped and, and calmed down. These guys have text and their A-plus content. The other thing they have, though, is they've got uh, the buy now buttons, which probably violate TNC, but they might have snuck it in. Um, but I really do like product grids. It's probably one of my favorite thing about A-plus content is the product grid. The average order value opportunity here is gigantic because somebody who's going to buy a toaster is probably going to buy a kettle, or somebody who buys a tea, tea maker is probably going to buy a kettle, right? And so there's an opportunity to buy multiple items from the same source, get the same quality, and, and that, of course, leads to more revenue for you. There are four core things you need to do in e-commerce. Sell more products to more people more often, and the fourth one's the one everybody forgets, for more money. And some of these charts that we looked at where they raise the prices, that's the more money thing. Raise your prices if you can't keep stuff in stock. It's not price gouging. It's basic marketing and capitalism, uh, and, and it's in your best interest to do so. Uh, but the more items and the average order value, uh, very helpful to have that from a product grid like this. All right, so I have not decided what toaster I'm going with, but I'm also not the kind of guy to spend a lot of time in shopping. I, I'm very much the don't have time to shop, don't enjoy the process, don't want to go in the store guy. I just want to make some uh, quick educated decisions. So that is probably more research I would have done on this toaster uh, by making this video than had I just gone out and bought it without. But this toaster here with just the value added $10 off, uh, I don't want to spend 20, 25% more on a toaster today than I could a year ago. So these guys are going to win my purchase today. I'm going to go ahead and execute that and buy that. So I've got some, an extra toaster on hand. All right. So that is our video today. Uh, I asked a bunch of questions for you to add in the comments. Raisins or no raisins in your English muffin? Uh, what kind of toast? What level of toast do you guys like? I, I was a level five guy. And uh, any other product research, interesting factoids, anything at all, add it to the comments section. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. We're always out to help grow your sales. You can check us out at myamazonguy.com.